Welcome once again to another episode of the J. Floyd Speaks Life podcast, man. Um, again, I appreciate all y'all for stopping by. I appreciate whether you're listening, you know, on um, any of the podcast streaming apps, whether you're on Apple Podcasts, whether you're on Google Podcasts, uh, Podcast Addict, uh, CastBox, any of those joints, or you just rolling in through SoundCloud, man, you know. Thank you for rolling in, man. Thank you for joining me in my family room. This is the family room intro, and this is where um, I, just, I usually just chop it up, man. This is where I, you know, maybe it's to ease my nerves. You know, maybe it's me thinking that I'm going to ease your nerves. I don't know. But, um, you know, I just talk about some things I got going on. You know, I've been spending a lot of time with the family. That's always my number one uh, priority. man. You know, and, I was, you know, actually right before I started recording this, you know, I was – Giving my son a bath, man. My son, J. Floyd Jr., man, uh, you know, he, he's two years old, right? So, you know, my wife was like, yo, can you get him in the tub real quick? So I so I got him up there, you know, bathed him up, and, you know, we rolling out. You know, I got the towel wrapped around him, uh, you know, we rolling into the room. I'm like, yo, you know, I got to do this so I can go record this uh, this intro to the show. So, you know, help me out, bro. You know what I mean? I got some things I need to do, so let's get you dried off. Let's get some lotion on you, man. Let's, you know, get you changed up, get you some pajamas on. And, you know, get my man, get my man's pull-up on. And, you know, I, I go to get this shirt. You know, you roll the shirt up and you get ready to pull it over the head so he can put the arms in. And he sees the shirt, right? He see the shirt and he instantly just turned and ran. He thought, I was playing. let's play this game. So he runs. You know, he runs and he ducks and he hides behind some furniture. And I'm like, man, I don't have time for this. Yo, listen, I'm trying to get you decent, bro. I'm trying to get your clothes on so you can get some rest and go to bed, man. You know, and, you know, it just dawned on me. You know, sometimes you have those moments where it's like, pow. You know, it just, you know, just reminded me that this is how we are with God, man. You know, you know, God gets something, something ready for us, some lesson, something that we need to put on to get decent you know what i mean he got the shirt rolled up ready to put it on our head but you know first thing we do is start running you know what i mean we start ducking and dodging and not doing what we need to do you know so you know i was just thinking about that man and just figured that maybe i'll I bless y'all with that that's the thought for the day you know we need to stop you know because god got some work he need to do he's trying to put that on us he trying to give us a blessing. He trying to give us something to wear, some pajamas, so we can get some rest. You know what I mean? He trying to get us ready to go out the house. He trying to get our shoes on, get us prepared, and we running, trying to hide, thinking it's funny. You know what I mean? Trying to have a little fun about it. You know, God's like, I got work to do, man. I got things to do. So, yeah, just ponder on that, man. Ponder on it and pray on it, you know? So we're going to roll right now, man. We're going to get into this show. This is a really great one. It's my man, uh, Jeremy Holmes, man, basketball star, Heights fam, you know what I mean, uh, legend. He's a, he has a book out. We're going to talk about all of that. So uh, thanks for joining me right here in the family room, man. I am Jay Floyd, and I hope you enjoy this episode. One, J. 
J. Floyd Speaks Life. J. Floyd is a husband, father, and follower of Christ. After enduring several tragedies at an early age, he faced depression and anxiety for years. After being led down the path of healing himself, he realized that his purpose is to use his words, his life, and his testimony to help others make similar journeys to healing through God's love. Jay is a Christian self-help author, speaker, and life coach. On this podcast, he will sit down with people you may know through TV or social media, walking in their purpose as they talk about what makes them who they are and simply speak about life on Jay Floyd Speaks Life. Yes, 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 yes. Welcome y'all once again to another episode of the Jay Floyd Speaks Life podcast. Man, I'm real excited about this one, man. I know this is like the second Heights Tiger I done had on the show, <laughs> man, but I'm super excited about this one, man, because this cat is a hoop legend, a Heights legend, a uh, a former Pitt Panther, a uh, former AAU, uh, one of them uh, ball legends, man. And I used to watch them cats, and I can't really, I can't really hoop. You know what I mean? I'm one of them fans, you know. So I used to love watching these kind of cats, man. So I just want y'all to welcome to the show, man, my man Jeremy Holmes, Cleveland Heights legend. What's going on, fam? Oh man, I'm happy to be in the building. Um, definitely appreciate you having me on. Um, you know, anytime I can um, sit and talk with another former Tiger, just somebody who who understands the neighborhood and the community that we grew up in, man, it's special. Um, you know, I don't think there's any other community on the planet, you know what I'm saying, like Cleveland Heights is. And so it just has a different dynamic, man. So the people that that are produced from this 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 community are special people. It is, man. It's you know, I know we got a lot of history in in the in the city, but man, it's such a unique place, especially like back in that nineties era, man. Mm-hmm. Cause coming off the eighties, and I remember trying to tell trying to describe to somebody the groups. I think they what they call them the school called them social groups, right? Mm-hmm. It was like it was not a gang. It wasn't really a frat, but they called them social groups, right? Mm-hmm. Like we had the HBs, the Heist Homeboys. We had the protégés. We had all kind the of brothers. I mean, the brothers. That's Savoir what I'm talking. Savoir on the female Savoir side. Savoir Fair, man. It was one. I think it was La Chic Suave, <laughs> yeah. man. They was doing like, as a kid growing up and seeing that, man. It was like living in like school days or or something like that, yeah. man. In Living Color or something. Uh, or no, that was the what's the one show with um, Different World. Oh, That's what man. it reminded me. It was like a different world. It's one of my favorites still to this day. <sighs> Heist was Heist was unique, man. And cats had like starter jackets with with the the group names on them mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, man, you can't make this stuff up, man. You know, sometimes you mention this stuff. It sounds like you're talking about something out of a book, right? But that was real life in that city, man. Right. And then you still had like that that dynamic where it was half Jewish and half black, but then you still had this this black culture that was bubbling up, man, affecting everybody. I I love it, man. Absolutely. I'm glad that that's when I came up because it's a real interesting time and place, man. Absolutely. So, yeah, man, welcome in, man. I want to bring you in, man, because you you do have this book out, man, and we're going to get to it. The book is called Cheers to Fears, and you wrote this book with your former teammate, Jerry Lockhart, right? Yep. Lock and rock. Lock and rock. Lock and <laughs> rock, man. Y'all was doing y'all thing, man. Yep. Now, you know, I, I went to school back in Heights back in the early 90s, right, from 90 to 94. So, you know, I was a fan of y'all in college when y'all started doing y'all thing in, mm-hmm. the, in the later 90s, man. Mm-hmm. We would come back and it's like, you know, that was our, our part of our claim to fame, man. You know, go down and watch y'all go to state and do y'all right. thing, man. So I can't wait to get into the story, man. But you know how we do here on J. Floyd Speaks Life, man. We, got, we start at the beginning, we go back to the root, man. So tell me, man, where were you born, man? You Were you born uh, and raised right here in Heights? Well, I was born at Booth Memorial in East Cleveland, Ohio. So, EC. You know, that's funny to me because, you know, the, the Shaw Heights thing is yeah. is, is still relevant. Um, but, yeah, I, I think I um, we moved to Cleveland Heights when I was, like, daycare. I was a very young kid. I grew up on Cedar Brook. 
Um, you know, my parents. So you was right there in the heart of it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I could I could hear the football games on Friday nights. Like, I could hear every <laughs> touchdown scored. You know, and that that like those things actually motivated me growing up. You know, but I grew up on the street with with, with kids my age, some younger, some older, and so you know, sports was our thing. Um, football, basketball, any bounce, any um, bounce, man. Hey. Am I tripping, man, or was any bounce more fun than baseball itself, man? Uh, look, I, I never understood why any bounce didn't take over baseball. That's what I'm saying. Because you could do <laughs> so much more man, than, than what you could do with the bounce. base. Uh, I loved it, man. I and loved it. Some people might not even know what we're talking about, man, but it's like you're playing, <laughs> you playing with, you got to have the aluminum bat with the tennis ball. tennis ball. ball. And you in a, like a parking lot. You could be like, you know, anywhere that's got a hard surface, man, like a concrete parking lot or something. Maybe that's why it appealed to us, man, because we right. wasn't you ain't you ain't need a, a official baseball field right. to play it. Play it anywhere. Dude, that was the best to me, man. Yeah. So tell me about like your parents, man. Your your did were they did you grow up in a strict household, man? Um, well, I grew up with my mom and dad. Um I'm my mom's only child, so only child. Yeah, I'm my mom's only child. Yeah. Um you know, and I just started looking at life like for her to only birth me, like it had to be something about me for that woman to only, you know, you know, conceive me. Um, my father had three other children, so I so I have three older siblings. Mm -hmm. um, they grew up in East Cleveland, so um, life was just different for us. Um, I, I I wouldn't say I was a spoiled kid. Um, but I would say I kind of got some of the things <laughs> that I wanted, but it was a sacrifice for them. Yeah. Like now that I'm older and I have children on my own and just understanding, you know, how finances work, like they Changed made the sure, game, don't it? yeah, like they made sure I had the Jordans and the, you know, my, my, my clothes didn't look bummy and, um, but my father was on me. Yeah. Like my father was on me tough. And, um, my older brother, um, was different from me um, I can say that um shout was out to just him one now. older brother one older brother and two older sisters okay yeah and so um you know my older brother was was totally different than me yeah you know he was more so in the streets and you know I was I was somebody who had you know took a love in the basketball early because my father played basketball all the time and so I was in the gym at a young age and just would like watch and like one day I want to do that and so from that from that time when my father started taking me in the gym, it's the only thing I did. So how early are we talking about? You getting in the gym, How? what age were you out there? Man, I just looked at a picture in my basement um, of me, my godfather, and my mom. Their team was the Spurs, so they even made me a T-shirt. I had to be three years old. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I've been in the gym since, since three. So Pops was a baller. Yeah, he got you in the gym. Yeah, and you just took right to it. Oh uh, man, I like I I, I literally taught myself man. how to dribble basketball and everything. I would just watch, you know, what I'm saying him and his friends and try to mimic the stuff that they did. And once I started to get better at it, I was like, man, I like this. That's dope. And I I I had a love for it on my own. Yeah. So you know, it got to a point that if my father was taking me to the gym or not, I had that basketball in my hand, regardless. Wow. So we talking about like, what about other family members? Did you, was it like hoopsters all in the family or was it just um, pops? I had a cousin who my dad taught how to play basketball. So once he learned a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he so would you play got with to me. see it happen. Yeah. Like he okay. was like, my cousin literally was terrible. <laughs> I don't even talk about it. He was terrible though. Um, Did he know he was terrible? He he gonna be listening to this like, yeah, you no, right, you right. He was terrible. He knew he was terrible. Yeah, but <laughs> but um, everybody doesn't start out good. That's true, right? So, but he started to develop some things, and he ended up playing high school basketball. You know, for a couple of years. So, I think my father might have started working with him in like the sixth grade. Yeah, and he just, you know, I'm saying so he just got better. So I was on top of me having talent. I was doing some of the stuff that he was doing. Mm -hmm. you know, to make myself better. So you um, learn how to not just, you taught yourself some things, but you also learn in the discipline of it. Mm -hmm. You were in the gym working on things. Yep. That's I mean, I was thing. in the backyard. In the backyard. I, we didn't go to things. gyms. Really? We didn't go to gyms. I mean, my father went to gyms to play. 
Yeah. And then they would play in the park, but I would be outside working. Mm-hmm. Like, as long as the sun was up, I'm working. And then when the sun went down, I'm in the basement working. So who are you idolizing at this time? Who, who are you looking at in, in the hoop world? Um, Because, well, I mean, we in Cleveland, man, and I don't – I can't think back to the Cavs roster at that time, right. man, but I don't really know, you know, Bobby Sewer or something. I don't really no, know who was. So, <laughs> so my favorite player um, of all times is Ron Harper. Ron Harper, see. I, I mean, I was a Ron Harper head. Harper was a beast. I was a Ron Harper head. Like, he was a straight beast, man. What if he, we hadn't traded him? Yeah. We trade him. He go to the Clippers. He break his leg. And then his game was like never really the same, yeah. but you know but he became a smart player though, he did. man. And he became a champion. Yeah, like yeah. Mike and Phil know who the, to go get. Playing the big six seven point guard for yep. the Bulls and Lakers, man, yep. just winning. Yeah, straight winning, man. Yep. He didn't even care about shooting the ball, man, just yep. winning. And he and he ended up changing his game. Yeah, and that's what let you know how smart of a basketball player he was because he wasn't the athlete yeah. that he was when he came in, but. Um, one of my mom's best friends used to work on the radio, Lady Skill. Ah, and, shout um, out to Lady Skill, yeah, man. I'm yeah. a big fan. Yeah, her and my mom went to high school together and ah. did the skating thing. And the, um, So when she used to be on the radio, I don't know if you remember the Chill Biscuits. Absolutely. That was me and my cousins. You serious? Yeah, me and my cousins used to be the Chill Biscuits. Like, we really thought we were somebody. Like, we were superstars. <laughs> or something. She said the Chill Biscuits on the radio, but... Um, I remember one time she had Ron Harper tell me happy birthday on the radio. After that, oh, it was a uh, I was, it was it's absolutely a rap, man. I'm going to the NBA now. <laughs> I, you know what I said? I felt like nobody could stop me now. My favorite player, he told me happy That's birthday. Um, and then he got traded. Like I came when my mom came home that, that day, I was crushed. Yeah. I was in my room in tears and she like, What's wrong? Man, Ron Harper got traded. I was sick. It was it was a serious blow to the city, man. I remember how like it was like the the sports debate in the city was like a race riot, man. Right. What was it? Danny Ferry we got? Yep. Like, oh. Danny Ferry. Danny man. Ferry, man. I, I I still don't understand that one. But I guess, you know, it worked out for Dude, that Everybody was one of the, the first end. times I remember race being the big thing yeah. in sports, man. Especially in this city, it was like, man, we traded Harper for Ferry. Yeah, yeah, yikes! Yeah. And I thought Ron Harper got snubbed out of the Rookie of the Year. They end up giving yeah. it to Chuck Person. Yeah, like I, I actually hated Chuck Person from that point <laughs> on. Like he did something to me. Like he had something to do with, you know. Hey, that's the way it go, man. I was angry. That's man. real fandom right there, man. man. I was angry at that guy. But um, um, I eventually got over it, <laughs> you know, and found some other players that I that I kind of attached myself to. But Ron Harper was the start for he, me. That was the beginning. Yeah. So, Chuck, you, you spoke in your book about being on the playground and getting kicked off by the big kids and mm-hmm. secretly waiting for that day. Maybe one day, you know, mm-hmm. they might ask you to sub mm-hmm. in for somebody or so. Yeah. I remember those moments too, man. And, you know, being a dude that did not naturally get basketball gifted, I was just like, man, they about to kick me off, man. It's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. Because, you know, I was one of the little kids, you know, we trying to, you know how the little kids try to put the the ball through the hoop backwards and let it come back. That was right, me, right. you know. And the big kids coming through like, man, get out of here with all right. that nonsense, man. Right. So you you was really out there hoping that they was gonna you know call you up mm-hmm. like to, I, to the G League, the real G League, the real G League, <laughs> man. I, like I remember, um, you know, just being at Cumberland. Cumberland. I remember Cumberland used to have a wall, right? Yeah. So on the one side of the wall, you got the younger people. And on the other side, you know, you got the older people. And I knew a lot of those people because my dad, my mom and dad went to Heights. So so my Uh, mom and dad knew all of these older guys. So I knew who they were because I had been seeing them for so long. Yeah. And my thing was, I'm going to work myself until they see me over here, until they notice me. So you didn't have nerves as a little kid? What? To play basketball? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, not at all. When the big kids came stomping, you wasn't like, oh. No, not at all. Cause the, be, because kids my age, like I couldn't play with kids my age because yeah. I was so serious about it. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I'm saying? So when you 
fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and you taking it serious, yeah. and they don't. Cats is double dribbling and uh, stuff. They, you like, uh, man, get out of here. All kind of stuff, man. <laughs> and I'm like angry because I'm because I'm serious <laughs> about it. So I would go and try to play with the dudes that were older than me because I knew it was going to be a challenge. Yeah. You wasn't about them games, man. No, I was serious about it. Yeah, I always been serious about basketball. You had a calling on you, man. Yeah, yeah, that's dope, though. I believe that. So, like, what about um? So, what starts happening in that age, in elementary school to middle school? What do you, do you? What is that like? Where you start playing on the teams? Do you do AAU? Um, what you do? So, AAU basketball wasn't out then. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that AAU. I didn't start playing AAU till I was going to the eighth grade. Oh, and that was, yeah. and, and at that point, it was like um, like it was a select few. Yeah, like it was like a VIP. You know, they didn't just. You had you know, to get the call up, get some your, – your parents had to be networked up. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you had to be, you know, one of the better kids in the area to even get a look at it. But, um, like, I remember my dad, he took me to the Force Fitness Center, and it was a, um, a hot shot competition. So, you know, you shoot free throws and mm-hmm. shoot over here, shoot over there for different point totals or whatever. Um, and I think I missed a free throw and I came in second. Like, I don't know what was wrong with me. But like those things made me, like I sat the trophy there, and I and I would always look at it, and it said second. Yeah. And I just be like it fueled me to go out yeah. and work on my game again. So, um, but that was like my first taste of really being amongst people that I didn't know. Yeah. And playing, but I was comfortable with it. Um, and I'm like, man, I can do better than that, and so. One of my best friends, um, a guy by the name of Chuck Cunningham. I don't know if you remember Chuck, but but he went to Canterbury with us. That name sounds Whitey familiar. with us. Heights, his older sister uh, went to Heights as well, but his father was the basketball coach at the um, at Kennedy Recreation Center on Harvard. Mm-hmm. So um, Chuck played on the team. He asked me that I want to play, and – Heck yeah, I want to play, you know. <laughs> so we would actually leave Wiley, get on the bus, ride down Cedar, get off that bus, catch another bus down Lee Road to Lee and Harvard, and then walk up to the rec center for practice every day. Um, and so, you know, as a fifth and sixth grader, I end up leading the city and scoring at like 18 points a game. So like 18 points a game when you're in the fifth and the sixth grade, it's yeah. a lot. A lot of teams ain't even scoring. That man, sometimes. made the all-star <laughs> team. I was like, man, I might be pretty good at yeah. this. How did that? How did that feel for you as a as a young kid? Are you surrounded by other athletes, or do your friends is just like, man, Jeremy's serious about that ball, man? Um. Well, one thing that I think um, for myself and 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 that moment and young people now as well. Like if you a ball player, you should hang with ball players. Yeah. Or or at least people who think they can play. Because most times you'll be playing basketball. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so you can't be a basketball player, but you hang with four or five guys that don't play basketball yeah. because at some point they're gonna steer you to do something else. They're gonna take your attention away. Exactly. Absolutely. And you're gonna think that it's cool because it's them. So that that's what your squad was looking like. Yeah, you most of the people that I cats. yeah, most of the people that I hung with played basketball. What about high school? You bounced in the heights. What year did you get in the heights, man? Um, ninety two, ninety three was my freshman year. Ninety two, ninety three. You rolled yeah. straight in the heights, hooping. Yeah. Is that you popular? Yeah. Well, I I, I knew a lot of people because of playing sports on this side of town. Um, but then my first cousins, Courtney and Chris Cook, they grew up on Woodview. Oh, so yeah. I would be over at my aunt's house a lot because I was the only child. So I was over there a lot. So I knew a lot of the guys from on the noble side, yeah. you know, at Cleveland Heights because they would come in my aunt's yard and play basketball. So, so again, I met all of these guys from, from hooping. And so, um, I don't know if you call that popular or you just know a lot of people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like, mean, I think it, I think it fall in there. Yeah, it fall in there. Yeah, eventually, it, you know, I think it turned into that. But um, so if you taking hoop that serious, uh-huh. 
what else you get into? What what is teenage Jeremy Holmes doing? <laughs> like, what's his life like? Man, basketball and <laughs> dribbling. And, you know, eventually we got into the girls. So there, there we go. So what what year are we talking about then? Um, so about eighth grade yeah. is when you know you started to. Look at the girls a little differently. Because that's the thing about you serious about basketball, but a lot of people are serious about looking at the cats who serious about basketball. Right. So, you know, the <laughs> girls start coming around. Yeah, and it changed things. Yeah. Like, we was late to a couple AAU practices. Um, being yeah. over a girl's house, we, you know what I'm saying? We got to get back home and get a ride <laughs> to practice, me and Damon. And so, um, but – one thing that I tried to let girls know is that I'll deal with you most times after I'm done with my yeah. basketball stuff. So like I'm doing basketball. Like that's not that's not I'm negotiable. Not gonna, yeah, I'm <laughs> not gonna. Let, if you want to deal with me, you got to deal with that. So, um, and I'm still like that to this day. Like I'm gonna go and play. Yeah, you know, consistently because it's 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 therapeutic for me at this point. You know, it's it's where I can just be in a situation for a couple hours where, where I don't have to think about what's going on in life. Yeah. And I mean, this is something that's, you know, you have been naturally gifted with something from birth, you know? So it's obvious that that would be a, a, an escape for you, something that calms you, something that mm -hmm. brings you back to God because this is God given for you, you know? Mm -hmm. So tell me, you rolling up in there, you in Heights, yep. you notice the girls, you know yep. what I mean? They rolling around. It was around. a lot of them. It was a lot of them, <laughs> you know, and I, you know, I was still at Heights at that time, so I remember yeah. how popular the, the the ball squad was, man. Yeah. The Hoopers was like, okay, yeah, okay. I knew the girls was checking y'all out, man. You know, and how good were y'all at the time? So, so the year before I got there, when I was in the eighth grade, they weren't the varsity team wasn't that good. Yeah, um, they might have been, they might have been ten and ten or. Something like that. Yeah. Um, I just remember uh, going to see them play Shaker. You know, you know, going to watch Damon play because you know he and I were so close. My father took me to the game at South, and they lost to Shaker in the district, and yeah. he missed a free throw that could have, you know, possibly won the game or whatever. And um, like I was hurt for him. Like I ain't want to see you know my guy go through that. It was tough, man. But that was his. That was his coming out party. Like that was it. Absolutely was. Yeah, that was man. the moment that things clicked. You and heard it changed that name popping everywhere yeah. after that. Yeah, he became who we know to yeah. this day. And so, shout out to D String, yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely, Love Stringer, man. Absolutely. Um, but uh, we had just won a national championship, AAU. Mm. Like no other team had ever done that. Um, and even if you look at AAU structure now, it's different. So. I'm going to claim that, you know, we did it better than anybody else. <laughs> the first and last. Yeah, so we, you know, we won that. So, um, you know, that was the first exposure to playing national, yeah. um, you know, competition. And so once you feel like you can dominate nationally, locally, you know, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't feel like anybody could beat us. But Which I was doing state championship run after run, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we went um, – 93, 94, 95. Uh, we didn't go my senior year. We lost in the regional to St. Ed's, and then the following year they won it all in 97. So that that gap of time was like crazy. I don't know yeah. that any other Division One public school has done what we did. And, and so I going through it, you're just playing basketball. Yeah. But once you look back on it, you know, 20-plus years later, you find out that – um, you really did something special. I think it was something special, you know, especially to be, you know, on the sidelines watching and even graduate and come back and watch y'all. I remember going down to Cleveland State watching y'all play, and it was like something to really be proud of, mm -hmm. man, because this is like our hometown school. It wasn't like no private school where they went out and recruited a exactly. bunch of superstars, you know what exactly. I mean? This was our hometown school that produced this dope squad like yeah. that. So. It was something to really be proud of, man, and we love that, man. We yeah, was absolutely. always rooting for y'all, man. Absolutely. You know, and um, I don't know. We just – we were a close-knit group away from basketball. So I spent um, the summer going into the ninth grade. I did everything that the varsity team did. So everywhere they were at, I was there, um, and we just became close. Yeah. Now, did you go straight into varsity? Man, I used to always wonder how that works. So, um, 
I pl- I started JV as a freshman. Yeah. And I had a varsity uniform from day one. I didn't play. I got in the game at the end of the games. Yeah. And, and you know stuff like that. So I still had to earn it. But um, I did you know make the varsity team as a ninth grader. Like I remember our first game against Joe's. You know, so we played a JV game. You know, we beating them pretty good. And Coach Berdan was like, Jeremy, go ahead and go. So it's like the end of the fourth, and I'm like, go <laughs> ahead and go. Like, all right. Like, so I get downstairs. Um, you know, they got the music playing, and they're already dressed, but the JV uniform is different than the varsity uniform. Right? Yeah. So they were literally like, I'm sitting there, you know, my arms and legs <laughs> out, and they're like undressing me so I could put on – my varsity stuff so we can hurry up and get together and do what we do. Like, moments like that. Yeah. Like, I remember Ron Johnson being the main one, like, helping me get yeah. my stuff on and all that. And, um, you know, when you have older, you know, teammates that want you to be a part of it, it gives you a feeling. He ain't um, that old Ron's in my grave. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you one year if you one year older in school, you the OG automatically. That is so, true. Um, but yeah, that 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 feeling was like crazy. So, being down there in the locker room before the game, I'm like, wow, this is what it's like to be on a varsity team. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I remember when I was in the seventh grade, went to the Shaker game to see Glenn Stringer play, and you know they play a one o'clock game. Yeah, the JV, I mean, the varsity team came walked in. Um, you know, fresh off the bus during the JV game, and the whole crowd focused their attention on them. They walk in with the big Nike bags on, and I'm like, man, one, I, I can't wait to be that. <laughs> like, I just wanted everybody's attention. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so to finally get to the point where I'm going to be a Heights varsity basketball player, like, yeah. it's crazy for me. And, um, you know, once you come upstairs and you go through that tunnel, there's no other feeling like it in the world. Yeah. And it was something about that era, man. You know, like I brought up the the old movies and stuff, man. It was like, you know, that era, the, the UNLV running Rebels into the Fab Five. Mm. And, and, you know what I mean? It was like when you running out, that, that starting five feeling, <laughs> it was just like looking at superstars come out, yep, man. Yep. You know what I mean? And you get to that level where Cavs got the – did you ever have them uh, – I always wanted to do, you know, one of my dreams – was to run on something with a breakaway unit. You, know, you know, the breakaway mm-hmm. warm up. Yeah. Did y'all ever have them, man? Because oh, that's yeah. like the dopest thing oh, I ever pants. said. Man, for real. Man, look. Well, I you get to rip the pants off and come back. <laughs> I still watch it to this day with them dudes snatching them pants man. off and, and doing that, man. We even got in we even got into what what uh what Alan Iverson was doing. He would snap like a couple at the bottom and yeah. a couple at the top and then the this part uh, of the open. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like just just following trends, man. man. You know that's a different player. That's one players. of the dopest things ever to run yeah. up and pull them breakaway pants oh. off, man. Oh man, it's it's. Um, but one thing that I have to add is there's no other thing in the world like the Heights Pet Band. That's so true. They, that's true. We always said I'm I'm talking about all four years. If they're yeah. not in the gym yet, we're not coming out. Yeah. That's true, and man. We'll we just make them wait. You talking about legit parties? <laughs> we'll jump off when they start going, man. For real, for real, man. Yeah. So yeah. that's dope, man. So all right, so heights. We know y'all do y'all thing, man. Yep. Y'all become like superstars. Yeah. Then college roll around. Mm-hmm. All right. So where'd you roll off to at first? Um. So, unfortunately, I I, I had a terrible, terrible quarter my sophomore year. Yeah. I got all Fs. Woo. I failed every class. <laughs> I failed every class. Because you was a superstar, man. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'll be all right. I, I, I make it up at the end of the yeah. quarter, get some extra credit and all that. Superstar, um, dumbest thing time I, for no homework. Yeah, dumbest thing I ever did in my life. Um, but I'm glad it happened. But um, so it caused me to not be eligible to go to college. Yeah. So... Um, a guy by the name of Trey Kilpatrick, he played four years in Florida. His mom, they moved up here from Florida, and so they tried to get him to play at Heights, but they wouldn't let him play. Mm-hmm. Six, seven, could do everything. So he ended up going to this uh, this JUCO in Kansas called Neosho. 
Yeah. And he told the coach about me. So the coach called man, me Kansas up. Kansas get so many JUCOs, man. What is man? They got all they the do, JUCOs. Man. <laughs> like, what all is of them. Kansas, man. And what's funny is like I think that it's so big and the basketball is so good that yeah. like people aspire to go to that. Yeah. Like you know, for us, we were like, man, I don't want to go to junior college. For them, it's o- it's it's okay to do. Yeah. It. It's part of um, their culture. Yeah. Yeah. It's just part of the culture, man. And it's some great basketball out there. Like wow. I, I was shocked. First time I heard of that was well, then Sean Kemp went out there. Sean, Sean, Sean Kemp went to JUCO, but I think he might have went to JUCO in Texas. Oh, was it Texas? Somewhere. Okay. Yeah, but, no, but like Texas, Kansas, California, Florida, um, those are the the main states where um, you okay. know, the JUCO ball is, is. Oh, now wait a minute. I forgot to ask you something. And this one is a big one, right? So before you roll off the JUCO, you, you got some serious life changes going on <laughs> senior year. Yeah, I already know what you're about to say. Yeah, so so what, tell me about your senior year and how your life shifted up for you. <laughs> so um, the summer, the summer going into my senior year, um, my my girlfriend at the time, she hit me with those words. Yeah, you know, I'm pregnant, and I'm like, there's no way you're pregnant by me. Like, <laughs> I'm not allowed to get. <laughs> like, who am I to get somebody <laughs> pregnant? You know. Uh, but it was real, man. Yeah. It was real. And I'm talking about um I was scared. I was scared to tell my parents. Um Did you I, think it was the end of your who, I thought career? it was the end of everything. Yeah. I thought it was the end of my life. Yeah. Um cuz it is it's funny that we put we put such a bad rap on people who have children. Yeah, really. especially the earlier the age. But when you think about it, none of us would be here if it didn't happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when you're young, you, yeah. you, you know, see, you're not thinking like that. But um, I thought it was the end of the world. Like, I thought my mom and dad was going to kill me. Um, they didn't. I thought that um, I just would be away from my friends because one of my good friends ha- ha- actually – had a child before me. Yeah. He ended up finding out that it wasn't his, but you know, we were doing normal teenage stuff and he could never do anything. Yeah. So that was the because image he, you had. Of, yeah. So it's I was over like, for me. I'm just going to be in the house for the rest of my <laughs> life and <laughs> feeding babies. Yeah. And, and I'm like, warming up milk bottles and right, stuff. Right. Changing diapers. I'm yeah. Like, Man, so how can I, you know, continue my basketball career, um, you know, with a child and my whole senior year? That's the only thing I thought about. Yeah. I never thought about nothing else. Like, I still did my basketball, and um, some may say I had a, a a good senior year. Yeah. To myself, I thought it was terrible. Yeah. Because I expected so much more. You know, I felt like I let my teammates down because I wasn't all there. Mm-hmm. But I needed somebody to talk to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I needed somebody – that Absolutely. that had actually been through that that can tell me you know maybe if they didn't go through it but that can just sit me down yeah um and kind of prepare me for it um and just let me know that that I can still you know do the things that I want to do I'm really going to have to do them more do you find now. yourself now uh in the roles that you are in now that you can be that voice oh, for some young people Absolutely yeah um I had a conversation this year with a uh, with a player at Heights and you know I wasn't at Heights but I found out that you know he quit the team and then they told me he had a daughter I yeah. said you gotta get him on the phone I don't even know this kid Yeah, I'm like man you gotta get him on the phone cause I need to talk to him Absolutely. and they thought it was about basketball and it wasn't so he and I had a conversation for about 45 minutes and then at, at the end I asked him did you know why I really wanted to talk to you and he thought it was basketball and it wasn't it, it was because and your senior year, you have a child, and I went through that. Yeah. So this is about like, like at that point, it was about that for me. You That's know what I'm dope, saying? Man. So, so none of my friends could really help me. My dad couldn't really help me because that was my dad. And so, um, you know, he was such my hero that I couldn't go and talk to yeah. him about that. Like I needed somebody you outside of my dad. Yeah, I needed somebody outside of my dad to talk to. 
That's um, where the mentors are key, man. We need that that group of mentors around us, man. Absolutely. That's why I really love what you're doing these days, man. And I really wanted to get you on the show because I think it's people like you that are uniquely positioned and capable of speaking into people like that dude. You Absolutely. Know, get him on the phone right away. That's what we need, man. We need an army of I went and met him. That. Yeah, see, that's I what I went and I'm met him face about. to face. Yeah. See, I, I, you know, you know, we can have a conversation o- on the phone and you might hear me, but I need you to feel me. Yeah. I don't want you to hear me. I need you to feel me. That's I need dope, you to man. understand, like, like you'll be able to see in my face and my body language that I'm serious. You know what I'm saying? You you can't feel that over the phone. Yeah. You can't feel it through a text. That's why. I, that's another reason why I'm glad I came up in that 90s era. <laughs> yeah. Is because we, have all yeah, we had to be us. <laughs> you had to look a dude in the yeah, face. Yeah, you had to be you. You had yeah. to figure this thing out. That's you, dope, man. Yeah, you couldn't use, you know, technology to get you through something, man. It, like it had to genuinely be you. So. I love that willingness to be a mentor and that style of leadership, man. I like yeah. that. So tell me when you when you got into that, when you write in it and you have those fears and you got that senior year, man. How did that, how did it turn out for you? How did you make your way out of it? Um well I didn't get the test score. So I was like, man, like where am I going to go to college at? Like nobody's recruiting me. I'm I'm not recruitable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cuz I'm not eligible. So I went and visited Owens Tech, which is in Toledo and um they had a kid by the name of Byron Gladden that was there. He went to Lorraine Armo King. He was like a great basketball player. Yeah. And um, I'm like, dang, if he here and he was that <laughs> yeah. good, this might not, this Juco thing might not be that bad. Cause you know, we really didn't hear too much about that around here. Mm-hmm. I, well, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? So um, visited that place and I liked it. And I'm like, man, I think I might do this. But when I got that phone call from the guy in Kansas, like, man, he was like a used car salesman, man. This dude was selling me all <laughs> kind of, all kind of stuff. I'm like, man, I got to go see who this guy is. And so, um, uh, you know, he came to see me playing this uh, this All Star game down down at CSU. Uh, I had a phenomenal game. He was like, man, we got to fly you out here, get you on campus. You know, what I'm saying so you can visit it. And I always tell kids, man, they be like, you know, what school should I go to? And I was like, you'll notice, like, you'll get this feeling when you get there. Yeah. I can't tell you what it is. I don't know how to describe it, but you'll get a feeling when you get there, and when you get that feeling, you'll know that that's the place for you. And so, um, so you knew this was the spot. I knew it was the spot, man. In Kansas, what's the name of the school? Neosho County Community College in Chinook, Kansas, in the middle of nowhere. Wow, they got all the <laughs> all the original Native American names still to the places. Yeah, there. I nice. mean, when I say in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Chinook, Kansas is in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's, it's two and a half hours from Kansas City. So when you fly in, it's a two and a half hour drive of looking at nothing but cows and grass. So what is life like out there for a college kid who used to be a high school superstar? And now I'm in this small place. Yeah. Man, we we play Monopoly every day. Every day, Monopoly. And we play. So first of all, my coach was like the – uh, next thing to Bobby Knight. Okay. He, uh, he like he didn't play with us, and our schedule was was on point. Yeah, I mean every hour he had us doing something: class, study hall, study hall again, practice, open gym, study hall again. Like <laughs> we didn't have time to do anything too much. Yeah, and then we had a curfew every night, so we had to be we had to be in our room, lights out every night. So it was sort of like a boot camp type of thing. That's what it sounds like. Do you think it might have been exactly what you needed? Uh, I don't, so I don't make basketball decisions without calling my junior college coach first. Yeah. To this day. That's dope. Period. I'm yeah. talking about if I'm thinking about interviewing for a job or I just got questions, I call him first. Yeah. So, um, you know, the people who are the toughest on you, they love you the most. And so he, he was like the second coming to my dad. <sighs> That's Shout facts. out to Coach Gio. So, so as you rolling, you now in the middle of Kansas. Mm-hmm. How many? How long? How far is this from Cleveland Heights? Like eighteen to twenty hours. Ooh. So you eighteen to twenty hours <laughs> 
away from your family and now mm-hmm. you got a son. Mm-hmm. How how is that working for you? How how uh, was that struggle? Oh, uh, it was crazy. So I, I the day I left, we had a family reunion. So I'm at the family reunion, I'm cool. Um get back to the house, I'm going to get my stuff. They're taking me to the airport. I just break down. You know what I'm saying? I just break down. I ain't never been away from home before. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe two weeks at the most. Um, and I'm about to go out here, and I know I'm at, I'm leaving for at least six months because I can't come back home until December. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, the best part about it was I had three other people from Cleveland coming with me. Uh, so they just made it more comfortable. You know, so you Jermaine shared Kimber, that journey. Yeah, yeah. Yep, Trey Kilpatrick, he was a sophomore. That's the guy who got me there. Jermaine Kimbrough, who went to Shaker, that was my roommate. Mm-hmm. And then Harold Russell that played at Heights with me. Ah, yeah. He was there with me too, um, you know, for a little while. So, you know, having somebody from home made it easier because we about to go through this thing together. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, we made the most of it. So you so you rock through. You know, you you know, I, I won't I won't touch on all the details because you do cover them in your book. Yeah. Your book, Cheers to Fears, which is really dope book. I just finished it up last night. Thank you, man. I and you talk it. about a lot of that that battle, and you know, yeah. while you were away at college. Um. So so, how do you make it from there? You get back into the big time. Yeah. Pitt Panthers. Yeah. How it does is, that happen? I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know, uh, but my 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 coach became um, you know a coach known for producing Division One guys, and so yeah. um, the guys the year before me, um, you know, who left the sophomores, one went to South Florida, one went to Georgia, one went to Youngstown State. So he was producing you know Division One you know players, and so we were successful, we were winning, but he knew how to get those coaches' attention. Um, you are definitely going to be eligible, you know, because you have to um, you have to graduate from junior college in order to go into, you know, a division one. And then yeah. he, he made sure that that all of our credits transferred over, you know, what I'm saying to yeah. that level. So we didn't take classes just to take classes. Yeah. We only took classes that would go into a four year university. And so, yeah. um, you know, on the basketball floor, we won. Um I led the state of Kansas in assists both my years. Um, I played with the, you know, with the player of the year both years. It was two different guys, so I take a little bit of credit for that because <laughs> I made them look good. Um, but I just was solid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, my game never changed. I just was solid. Um, just being a point guard, doing what I do. Speaking of that, what does Jeremy Holmes' game on the court look like? I mean, um, you got any NBA comparisons? What you got? What's your style like? Um... If I would have to, if I would have to compare, I would say um, a mix between um, a Jason Kidd, you know, from a cerebral standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can shoot it though. Uh, yeah, I can shoot. <laughs> he can shoot it too, but he, he, shot, he, but he, he developed that. Last couple years. Yeah, he developed yeah. that over years. Like I always can shoot the basketball. When I was young, I was a scorer. Yeah, and I just kind of tweak my game in order to to make sure my team um got what they needed like I was more so um you know I'll pick and choose my spots but I'm gonna make sure everybody else eat and that's just how I live my life as well you know what I'm saying so um yeah so I would say a mix between like a Jason Kidd um Isaiah Thomas Isaiah Thomas ish without which which Isaiah Thomas though you got it's only one See, that's what yeah, I'm talking about. That's the answer I'm talking yeah, it's about. It's only one. <laughs> I, I, we ain't get into that. And no offense to yeah. the current Isaiah Thomas because <laughs> I thought he did some phenomenal things. But when we talk about the I'll greats you on that and one. you say Isaiah Thomas, we, we're going there first. Yeah. We're going to Detroit first. I almost first. feel like the, the new dude should go by a nickname. Like that's not even right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Like IT2 or something. Yeah. He yeah. need a nickname, no, I'm with you. man. But yeah, so so tell me this. So you went to Pitt. How many years you stay at Pitt? So I was there for two years, and, two. and man, it's funny because I thought I was gonna go to Central Connecticut State. Okay. Yeah. The the you know you got to go through the recruiting process all over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying when you go to junior college, and so 
I had a couple colleges that you know that were interested on me in me. You know, I was getting letters, phone calls, the whole nine. Um, and then I came home for spring break, and the assistant coach, Jim Christian, who's the head coach at Boston College now, he called me and was like, look, I need to see you play again. And I was like, all right, well, we play every Saturday at 1 o'clock at Taylor Academy in my neighborhood. And when I got to the gym that Saturday afternoon, he was already there. was already there. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> And it's funny because, and it just lets you know how 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 cold our neighborhood is. Guys that didn't even play basketball, that didn't do homework, like man, they was in there tucking their t shirts in and they shorts. <laughs> like he was there to see them or something. Like they was gonna get a scholarship too. But it, it, it was it was good though. You they know was what making you look good, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So I, team I, effort. Yeah, so I had a good day that day, and um. I chose Pitt because one, it was in the Big East. Yeah. So I always watched the Big East growing up, um, and wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to go to a Nike school. Yeah. Like that was all of our goal in junior <laughs> college. Man, I got to go to a Nike school, but they were Adidas, so I can accept that. Um, it was two hours away from home, so I and would be back going close from, to your family. Yep. Yep. I'm close to my family, but the one thing, and this might sound crazy. Um, Vontigo Cummings was at Pitt mm-hmm. and he could have put his name in the draft as a junior and you know went to the NBA but he decided yeah. to come back for his senior year and he played point guard. Six I remember point that guard. cat. Well, did he go to the Pacers? He uh, got drafted, he right? He got drafted yeah. by but he got traded to Golden State on draft night. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. But he got drafted by the Pacers. He sure did. Yeah. Like I don't know if anybody – I know that because I was so into I'm, it. I'm a draft head, so I'm always watching yeah, drafts. Yeah, he he went to the Indiana Pacers, but um, and that was my roommate my junior year, by the way. I remember Cummings, man. He was dope. Yeah, I know he could play. Yeah, he could play for sure. So, I had a situation where I can go to Central Connecticut State, and they put the ball in my hand, and it's you got the keys to the, you know, to the car, and yeah. you can drive it, and it's it's this and that, or you can go to this situation where you can play in the Big East, which is one of the best conferences conferences in the country and there's a guy that's better than you in your position yeah which one you gonna do most people gonna go to the yeah so you took the challenge yeah i took the challenge i wanted how did that work for you i did y'all mesh oh absolutely i I, that was my roommate yeah so we became that's very close but for me it was i knew that every minute i played i'd have had to earn it yeah and i just I like, I like that. I don't even know that at that age I understood exactly what I was doing, but that's just who I am. Something pushed you towards yeah. making that 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 yep. decision. Yep, yep. You know what I'm so, saying? It was just who I am. So what about afterwards, right? When you start creeping up on senior year, mm-hmm. you start looking at life after college basketball. What What is that whole process like? I always wondered that. So, and that's where the fears comes in, at, yeah. right? So, now I work my butt off from my junior to my senior year. And it's 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 funny because the feelings that I experienced as a senior in high school with dealing with my son, yeah, are the almost the exact same feelings that I was dealing with stepping into my next thing cuz I didn't be know cuz I didn't know yeah. where I was going. I put the work in to go and become a professional basketball player, yeah. but I didn't display that because I couldn't channel my feelings and my energy. So my 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 anxiety, you know what I'm saying, was mm-hmm. was you know what I'm saying was crazy. So it was one of those things where again, I didn't showcase everything that I was able to do because I needed somebody to talk to. I was just about to ask you at this <laughs> time, did you have any mentors or anybody around you? Man, I, I just was I'm one of those those people where um I might have an issue and I might not say nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I might just I might just keep it to myself. Yeah. You know cuz that that's 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 the comfortable thing to do in the moment, but it really makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, and so um but I went through that and um I mean I met my co-author in those two years, so that's right. <laughs> Jared Lockhart, man, yeah. is the other half of yeah. the team, Rock and Lock, man. And look at what y'all are doing now, man. Yeah. Affecting and people's lives, man. Yeah. So this this picture was actually 
the cover of our media guide to see our uh, senior year. And by the way, this book, like I said, I read it last night, man. It's got a foreword by my man Travis Kelsey, man, another Heights alum. Yeah. Doing big things in the NFL right yep. now, man. Shout out to Travis Kelsey and Absolutely, the Kelsey brothers, man. man. Absolutely. They do their thing, man. And that, and that shows you the kind of love that Heights shows. You know, not only the, the, the cats coming up and tucking their shirts in for you at Taylor Academy, man, but yep. Travis locking y'all down with a forward, man. Yep. And, you know, I think it's some really great things y'all got in y'all future. Man, nah, you know, nah, I believe it. Yeah, believe serious it. stuff, man. You know, so so I, I do want to talk about this because this is really I'm a big sports fan. Me too. Not great at them, but I'm I'm a big fan. Man. So I'm, it's interesting for me to talk to somebody who was born with that gift and has made that journey. And I'm like, so when you start, like you talked about the professional, you looking forward to your career after mm -hmm. collegiate sports. You'd have made it all the way to Division One, Big Ten, I mean Big East, and you you doing it. Now, what does that look like? Do you go overseas? Do you try your hand? They didn't have the G League at the time, right? Or the D it, League back then. It right? might have started a year or two after I got out. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what is so what is a lot of overseas stuff that goes on for hoops, right? Yeah, it's a lot of overseas stuff. Um, for those who perform, mm. for those of us who who don't perform, you know, up to the capability, you yeah. got to you have to try to scrap to put something together. Yeah. Um, so I remember going to Charlotte to you know this overseas camp, and um, I played well. Yeah. I played well, but they were like, you know, we only looking for big guys. We we, we can't use any guards on this team or that team. So, um, you know, after that. I kind of gave the dream up, not 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 completely, because if somebody would have called me and was like, "Look, I got a job for you," I'd have took off. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, I'd have took it in a heartbeat. <laughs> um, but I still played all the time. I worked out all the time, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get my son started in sports. So we got him to going. You know what I'm saying? Playing in some basketball leagues. So your son was kind of like an outlet to help you with that day. Yeah. Where you realize yep. that maybe this ain't. The thing that I'm gonna keep pursuing in this way. In this way. Yeah, but it could be, you know, it can you can still reap benefits and have blessings from it in other ways, which yep. you're doing, right? By affecting yep. other people's lives. Yep. And then I felt like um like I would be the guy who when the guys came home from overseas or the NBA in the off season, I would be the guy to get them their competition at home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I was I was okay with being that. Yeah. You know, when y'all come here I'm going to get at y'all, and then I'm going to send y'all back to go make some money, <laughs> you know? I like that. Right? Yeah, so I could be a part of the story. You always like a challenge. Oh, absolutely. That's your thing, right? Absolutely. So let me ask you this. Back when you were playing, <clears throat> think back to your best game. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about that day? Um, I don't know, because what I feel like is my best game and what my coach might say was my best game. Let's go with what you feel like. Um... I felt like uh, one of my best games was when I was in junior college. Um, you mean just overall my whole career? Whole career, everything. Oh, oh so I'm going to say the AAU National Championship game um, in 93. Um, the night before the championship game, I go to use the bathroom. I ain't feeling that good. We, we, were, in, uh, we were in Tennessee. What part of Tennessee were we in? Oh my, Kingsport, I think. Okay. Kingsport, Tennessee. Okay. Is that a place? I got to trust you on that. <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about Tennessee. I think, I forgot what part of Tennessee we were in, but um, the year prior, we had lost the national championship in Yakima, Washington to a team out of St. Louis. We had a chance to win. We lost it. So we come back, we make it to the national championship game again. Um, and we play on the Arkansas Wings. And so the night before, Go to the bathroom. I wasn't feeling that good. And um, long story short, it was coming out of both ends. Yeah. Like I, think, I was I sick think we all have as been a there. dog. Yeah. Sick as a dog. So, um, you know, my parents, they take me to the ER. And um, I had to get a shot in my butt. So my <laughs> butt was sore. But my coach was like, man, whatever we got to do, he got to play. Yeah. He got to play. And so I felt like that was my best game because – 
Man, I was hurting, man. I was sick. You was challenged. My butt was hurting. You know what I'm saying? And I scored six. I only had six points in the game, but the six points came in like the last two minutes. Yeah. You know you what I'm saying? You responded to a challenge, man. Yeah. That's a common thing for you. Yep, and we won. And so, you know, I, I, I looked at that like – um. Like I'm really somebody who um, is special amongst their peers because you do it in, in, in certain moments. Wow. All right, so tell me this. Who's, who is the – and I know this is a common question for athletes, but I couldn't resist. Who is the best player you ever played against? Mm, that's tough. Um, I got to say this kid named, uh, named Dante Hicks. Yeah. Out of, um, he was from uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, and he went to Allen County Community College. He was he was amazing. Like wow. that dude could shoot it, dribble it, everything. Like he was you Kyrie. Know what happened to him? So, you know, we left uh, Kansas, and he signed to go to New Mexico. He got out there. He found out he had a heart problem and could never play basketball oh, again. Man, that's crazy. If not, you would have knew who he was. Yeah, like he was good. Wow. Like he was just talented like he probably we played each other four times he probably averaged 30 something on me but i won three of the game (laughs) but he was like he was amazing though man that's dope man all right so you told me jason kidd man and and you gave me a a a, a comp of description of what you would like on the court man describe jeremy holmes the man i see today um Man, just a dude who has um, been through a lot. Um, I've been through a lot of firsts. Like, I'm the first one of, you know, all my friends to, you know, really have a child. And, um, you know, I did a lot of things um, early, bumped into a lot of walls, um, and just have, you know, tried to be the best person I can, man. Like, I've, I've, I've always just prided myself on looking out for other people yeah, and never looking for... Um, you know, anything in return. And so um, I got into coaching earlier, early in my life, in my early 20s. You and really so, did, yeah. Yeah, I got into it early, and I found out that it was rewarding. Um, and so, man, I've just tried to change as many lives as possible. Um, there, there, there are always people that, you know, they come to me and say, man, man, coach, you, you changed my life or you said this to me. And I don't even remember that stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, did I? I said that? Oh, okay, good. What um, was it like, man, going full circle, though, to come back to be the coach of Cleveland Heights, man? I know that had to be something special. Um, It was very special. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I, I, I was the first, you know, African-American coach yeah. at the school. Um, I'm the only person that can say that um, Cap coached him and then I became Cap. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, I became Cap for two years, man. So. Do you think you would have liked playing for you when you was a player? Loved it. Yeah. I'm the greatest coach ever, <laughs> man. But, uh, but only because, um, like, I let my players play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't – you know what you're capable of doing. M- most – if if you get a kid as a ninth or tenth grader, you've been playing basketball long enough to know what you're capable of doing. And yeah. so I'm never going to try to steer you away from that. Like, I want you to do what you naturally do. Um, you know, I'll just reel you in and teach you some things along the way to help you win games um, that 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 become close games. And so um, I would say yes. But for, for, for me to leave, and I I know that people don't understand this, I left a team that had just went to the state championship and I was returning eight players. And the only reason that I left is because it was Cleveland Heights. Nobody else could even call me and said anything to me. Um, And the last thing that I wanted to do was let the job present itself and then I don't take it and then I look back and say, what if? That's a good point. So right now, like I said, y'all, there, if you go check on Amazon, um, and I now have the paperback and the Kindle version of my man's book called Cheers to Fears by Jeremy Holmes and Jared Lockhart, man. Forward, written by Travis Kelsey. I encourage everybody to go out grab a copy of that, man. 
check it out. It's a really good story, man. Tell me right now, man, what what else is next for you, man, other than pushing this book? I think this is a really dope book. I think everybody should check it out. Thank you. I love the fact that you out there mentor kids, man, and you are really trying to turn back around and be exactly what you needed when you were younger, man. I think yep. that is the dopest purpose in the world to me. Uh, what's next for you? Oh, and also... Tell us about your relationship with your son since we mentioned him so many times. You're going to have to tell us how things is going, man. Uh, well, he's 23 now. 23. Yeah, 23. Yeah. May 13, 5 13, 96. Man, changed my life. Um, so right now he's actually coaching himself. He's he's uh, uh he's in Kentucky with, a, with an AAU organization wow. called Ladies First, ran by Ortney Bryan, who does a phenomenal job with, you know, the uh, women – on the basketball side, and um, and uh, he's a good kid. He graduated from Heights in 2014. There we go, full circle. Um, I sent, I actually sent him out to Kansas City, Kansas Community College, because my teammate from the Osho is the head coach out there, Kelly Newton. Um, it didn't work out for him, um, but obviously, you know, there's 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 something else for him. It's you know, what I'm saying? But he's a great kid, man. Um, super quiet. Uh, super quiet you know you we we probably could drive from here to kansas and he might say three words <laughs> um but he's been shouting me out on ig go get my dad's book i'm proud of my dad so that's dope um man. you know we just got a unique relationship because i was so young like yeah the father that you know my children my, my my other children have now is not the same father that he had yeah um you know, I had my youngest son at the age of 30. So the 30 year old me and the 18 year old me are two totally different people. Um, but, you know, I appreciate him because, you know, he made me grow up. Yeah. You know, he made me, you know, look at things differently. And um, so I just hope that 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 he's proud and he's able to look at the book and, and, and know that he can do things that he wants to do, whatever that may be. That's dope. So what's next for Coach, <laughs> legend Jeremy Holmes, man. Um, man, I'm just trying to change lives, man. Um, you know, using basketball because, um, you know, that's the language that I speak, and that's that's you know that's how I'm able to get to people. Um, and I just love the game, and so, um, I plan on being, um, you know, in a different place in the sports management game a year from now. Um, you know, doing some things with Travis Kelsey as That's well. Dope. He's a he's an awesome individual, man. Just a good dude that, you know, loves Cleveland Heights and loves Cleveland Heights basketball. And that's that's you know, that's how we met. You know, I coached him. I was on the coaching staff when he was in the ninth grade at Heights and yeah. you know, we just took a liking to each other and he's been the same person, you know, excuse me then that he is now and so um, you know, hopefully doing some things with him and you know, just continuing, you know what I'm saying, with the movement and, you know, helping athletes along the way, man. Um, whether it's from a mental and emotional standpoint, a financial standpoint, a, a, a training standpoint, you, you, you know what I'm saying, whatever that may be. And so um, I'm excited about it because it's really not work to me. That's you know, the it's, dope it's, part. Just, it's just something that I, that I enjoy doing. So um, there will be another book soon. Um, I'm going to continue to write them. I, I just – I like to write, and you know, if if people respond to this the way that I know they are, then you know, I'm gonna give them something else. I love it, man. Again, I thank you for coming on, man. I think that you touched on some really good things, man. When you talked about what's next for you, I'm pretty sure there's a ton of great things ahead for you to do, man. We talked about from the beginning. You are uniquely gifted, man. God gave you a gift Absolutely. in the basketball area. It doesn't always lead <laughs> to the thing that we see on TV, but God will receive his glory from what he put into you. So I, I firmly believe that, and I think, you know, it's going to be exciting to see everything that you do in the future, man. Like you said, and I think these are really poignant words. You said it's the language you speak, yep. and it really is. It's what God put in you, and I love the fact that you're using it to reach out to people and do greater things, man. So, I man, appreciate that. Dude, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I loved our conversation, man. I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. And, uh, again, I thank everybody for listening, man. That was Jeremy Holmes. Uh, keep rocking with me, man. I'm going to have some more uh, empowerment shows, some more interviews. And I'm just going to keep doing my thing, man. So thank you all for joining, man. As always, I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. I'll check for you all later. One. <laughs>